we're going to finish off this series of the test strategy for REST MUD by using the automated execution and unit tests to build on for exploratory interactive testing through the GUI and the REST API. Should be good. Okay, welcome back. So this is a simple walkthrough test that basically starts the game and then walks through the entire game from end to end and makes sure we can complete it. So at some point in the game, we got to a certain part in the maze. And then what we want to do is get down to the vase puzzle rooms area and solve this puzzle. And solving the puzzle in a walkthrough is so simple given the amount of work that we put in to make this happen because it's an adventure game so we assume that the player doesn't know what they're doing at the start we have to handle a whole bunch of combinations but in reality all we have to do for this puzzle is get down to the vase puzzle room in room 21 take a vase go north to the hammer room then use it and that's it our score goes up so if i run this test this will start up the game and run through the entire game playing it. Let's have a look. So we've got, we're come down to the vase puzzle room. We take the vase, we look around, pick a vase, go north in the hammer room. There's a hammer here. I use the hammer and um, we smash it. We get more treasure. There's a score. We check our score, our score has gone up. Easy. Now, one of the things that this test does is when it runs, it writes a file, I mean, it writes that entire document. So this is, it writes this walkthrough document that I can use to, uh, it has a PDF and give to people. So there's a solution of how the, the game works. And it also kicks out a set of commands. So here's all the commands that the walkthrough does. You can see here down the bottom, we get to the room, take the vase, go north, use the hammer, check our score. Now, the reason for doing that is all the testing at the moment has been inside the game. In the architecture here, all the testing has been here. I don't have any testing over here yet. I don't necessarily want to do all of this interactively. And I haven't got to the point where I've automated a lot of this yet. So this is my first sanity test way of automating the game. So what I do is I have another set of tests which run against a running instantiation of the game. They read that file, read that commands file, and play it through as API calls so that I'm starting to play the game through the REST API. So if I run that game as a single player game, run that, running. I should now be able to run this test. Then let's have a look. So we can see we do a bunch of stuff, we get our score, then we navigate through the maze to get to the point where we're looking for the puzzle that we've just created. So I go south into that room. There we go, we're in the vase puzzle room. There's the hammer room and there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. There's the uh, hammer chain to the floor. We've got the, there's a sign. We haven't read the sign. I should probably do that in the walkthrough. I can add that later. We take the vase, we go north, we use the hammer then smash the vase, we get our score and our score increases and there it is. So now I've put in the game code with TDD. We made a mistake, so we refactored that. So now we've got code that covers the game. We reviewed that. We added some code for coverage. We did some exploratory testing at the, the unit and game level. Created a work through test, a walk through test, which just does a happy path through, still within the, the game. Then we started the game up acting as a REST API. Then we played messages through in the REST API. So we've um, covered the game at a REST API level. That's quite a lot of 
stuff in there and exercising it. What I haven't yet done is exploring the application from a GUI perspective, which is what we typically expect in a normal system. We write unit tests, we write automated code through the API, then we do some exploratory testing through the front. So I could do that now. So I'm running the game locally in the IDE here. I haven't deployed it to a server or anything. So in theory, I should be able to do localhost. What is it running on? 4567. Welcome to Rest Mud. So yes, I need some help. I can't remember what I'm doing. So I have already completed this game because it's a single player game. Now, that, now that's why I have an issue when I start coding, testing this through the GUI. So what I have to do is I have to essentially, so I could just have a look, let's see where we are. So having done the walkthrough, because we've done the walkthrough test, user player look. So there's a hammer chained to the floor. I can examine it. I could, let me try and take it. We haven't tried that in the, the end game. Can't take that. Okay, good. Let me try and drop it. Sorry, can't see the hammer anyway. Now I know why that is. That might confuse people. So that could be something that I want to fix. I want to have a, a command that says drop because it's a location object, so it's not supposed to be collectible. But it's basically said it can't drop it. That's probably a bug. I should start tracking this. So I'll put this into a, a better format layer. Now that's a general problem with uh, location objects. So I could carry on like this doing exploratory test and it's important to do that because uh, it, wouldn't, it didn't occur to me in the code that I needed to do that. But using the system, I get different ideas of how to test it and it's much more uh, obvious the kind of things I should do because I'm working at a much higher uh, level of the application rather than in at the code. In at the code, I know what can happen. And I mean, that's not a problem Right? There's nothing, there's not a bug, that's not that's how the application is meant to work. But as a user, from a user perspective, that clearly is a, a confusing message and, and is wrong. So I could carry on like this. The other thing I can also do, and what I probably want to do is stop the start of the server, get in as a new user, do different things, or put it in multi-user mode, then I can log in at different users and test different things at different points. What I can also do, because the application is running, is in Postman. So I need to get, so this is interesting. So what I've been testing is testing it on multi-user mode. What I need to do is create a new set of requests in Postman. But I can test this here. So I've just sent an API request through. So we automated the API request before, but not interactively. But using this, I can interact with the API requests. I can do the same thing. I can do a, Drop hammer. Sorry, I don't know how to do that. I can uh, go south here. I can experiment. Oh, don't know how to go south. Of course, you don't. There we go. So now we're south. Uh, I can see some stuff because the game ran the creates things. I can see a sign on the wall. So I can examine that sign. Great, there's the baz, let me examine that. So I now that it's running, I can interact with it through the GUI or through the API, but in single user mode. So I can actually, when I'm testing, use the code that I have in the in the unit test, the APIs there, the, the abstraction layers, which make it easier to put the user into a certain state very quickly and then come in and interact with it at the GUI level. I have a lot of control because I'm combining automated abstractions with testing at the, the GUI and user level, which is an important thing to try and do. We can do exploratory testing at the code level using the, the abstractions and unit test facilities. We can use them to set up data in our application. I've got REST API abstractions. I can do a whole bunch of things through the REST API, then come in and test it at the GUI or the API level. I need to combine all the aspects I've got. We don't just have to develop with unit tests, come in and do exploratory testing through the GUI. Understanding all of this 
as a test process and as a test strategy means we can reuse the different parts to make ourselves more effectively. And it's not just because I'm a single person building this up. These are the kind of facilities that I would expect on any project that is serious about combining or getting the most out of its exploratory testing and its automated execution. We should be combining all this to make it more effective. And there's risks when we do this. There's risks that if I use the abstraction layers to put the application in a certain state, that I couldn't do that through the GUI. That's a risk. But if I have, if I then mitigate that risk by having things like the walkthrough test that you saw, doing those uh, steps through the GUI or the API, then I've mitigated that. And then it's got to the point now where I can then carry it forward because we've mitigated that risk and now I've set things up. I'm hoping, I mean, this is going to be a long video, even though I've condensed things down, but I'm hoping that there's enough useful things in there to show you a kind of, not necessarily an end-to-end -end test process, but that coverage across all the different parts in the, the test process, how we can implement them fairly simply and how they all interrelate and hang together and if you're operating as a team completely separately not reusing other people's parts in their process you're really not getting the best out of this unified approach to testing your application thanks very much for sticking with this i hope there was some useful elements in there <laughs>